Hello, Keith from TerryX here. In this video, I'd like to show you how to install shorter springs and an internal spacer to lower your front forks internally. Some people prefer to lower, may prefer to lower this way rather than using the triple clamp modification. Uh, it's more a question of uh, personal taste, I think. Um, uh, how the bike looks, or some may, may not even may not like the bars being slightly higher. Whatever reason, we we supply in the kit the um, internal spacers required to do this. So I'm just going to take the forks apart, show you how to work out the spacer length, and install um, shorter springs. So <clears throat> first off, I'm just going to take the spring off on this leg. Now these fork legs have been lowered, so I would actually be, there is actually a space in here where I'll be showing how to work out from the spring length that you're using, how to work out the spacer length and the preload on the spring. So I'll just do this fairly quickly. I'm I'm just going to tip the oil out of here. And we're going to take the base valve out. Very important to note that the socket that I'll be using on this has no leading chamfers. They've been machined off or ground off. Um, here's a socket that does have a leading chamfer. If you use a socket like this, there's a good chance you'll round off the nut in the base valve. It's only about five mil high in the hex and you really need no leading. So I have my trusty rattle gun, which is the best way to get this out. And it's as simple as Sometimes you hold the cartridge to stop it from spinning. And there's going to be oil in here. A little bit pesky to get out that one. Now, unless you're doing fork seals, we won't need the outer fork leg, so I'm just going to move that out of the way and leave the cartridge. So this is the part we're after, and I'm just going to pump the cartridge into the oil. So this is the bit we're interested in. Just going to take off the hydraulic stop there. And then we can just push the mid valve there, out the bottom. And stop the cartridge. Now this is the spacer that I've already installed. So I'm just going to take that off for now. Piston ring came off there. And I'm just going to put this back together as if it was standard. Now, a little top out spring on the top of the rebound mid valve here, mid re rebound tap. And I'll explain a bit about that in a second. So. 
to work out the spacer length. So standard springs on a KTM EXE are around about 505 up to 510. My KTM springs were 505. Um, now these forks were lowered using, I think it's a YZ spring, uh, 480 mil long. So 25 mil shorter than the standard. We'll just use a 25 mil spacer. Um, and 25 mil just happened to be the amount that I wanted to lower the bike, the forks by. Um, and just slide them up in the triple clamp, triple clamp a little bit to get around 30, 32 mil, same as the rear in our lowering kit. And we also supply these preload spaces with the kit and two of these 50 mil long. You just need to cut them down to whatever size you like. <clears throat> now, the reason why we supply these is because you may have a 475 mil long spring. I think some Hondas had 475, but you might only need, you might only want to lower your springs by, your front forks by 20 mil, in which case you have to use some preload spacers down here just to take up the extra space in the spring because you need some preload on the spring. And I'm going to show how to work that out right now. So this measurement, this, uh, nylon ring at the top here is what the spring sits on you want this preload adjuster set halfway roughly halfway there's about nine eight nine ten turns maybe on this so you set it halfway that will give you um, four or five mil movement in either direction so we're going to set this with some spring preload and then you can wind it in or out to suit once you uh, once you've got your bike set up so i'm just going to put this cap on I'll show you how to work this space length out. Make sure it's right on. So we're interested in this distance between this spring seat and this spring seat. And in this case, I can tell you that it's 500 mil. Now we had a 505 mil standard spring in here, uh, which gives that five mil preload. And basically speaking, 505 mil in a 500 space will compress the spring by five mil. Now, if we were to use a 480 spring, we're gonna have 20 mil difference in, this, in the actual height here as measured, and we need five mil preload. So we're gonna add a 25 mil spacer inside here to bring this down to fit the spring and preload it by the five mil we're looking for. Now, if you had your 25 mil spacer in there, but you had a 475 mil spring, you'd want to then put a five mil preload spacer down the bottom there to take up the extra five mil that the spring shortened. Otherwise, you'd have to shorten the fork by 30 mil with a 475 spring to have a five mil preload on it. And obviously you don't want to go shorter than we need to. You, need, you, you want to have a, a, a idea of where you want to get to and you use these spaces to make up to, to make up the preload with the type of spring you're using. Now these <clears throat> springs are different lengths are mainly used on different bikes. So they have Yamahas, Hondas, um, SXs. They all generally have the same outer diameter. It's always around about 42, 43 mil. Um, uh, but they differ in their lengths. So I think this is a, a YZ Springs 480 long, an old, older, older version of YZ. I think some are, uh, some Hondas are 475, some SXs might be 490. It really just depends on what you pick. Now I've got a race, we'll have a race tech chart on our site that you can uh, refer to and and see which bikes use which size springs. It's just a question of making sure that you've got the right OD on the spring. Uh, so then we cut our spacer and we put it back inside the cartridge, just like the one I just took out. So I'll just do that again quickly and then we'll put our forks back together. So spacer on.
just going to get our fork leg back over. Feed it in so you can feel the cartridge, you'll feel it going to where it needs to be. Base valve. Just push down on the hydraulic stop just to hold the cartridge in. And once you've got that started, Okay, so the cartridge is reinstalled and all we need to do now is put some oil in it and bleed it and put the spring back on. So I'm just going to show you that quickly. I'm going to reuse this oil because it's not been in there that long. I don't know if you can see this. It's actually full up, <clears throat> but it won't be in a sec, so we'll just I'm just gonna keep putting this up and down until we can feel all the air disappear out of it, especially on the upward stroke. A bit of gurgling. And the gurgling stops and it feels fairly smooth. So when that's bled, you just need to set the oil height. Um, look in your manual, the manual will probably say 110, something like that. It's just the distance from here to the top of the oil. You can do that using a syringe with a, a piece of plastic tubing on it and just hold the chip, mark the tubing and push, push it down and suck the oil back out. So fill it up a little bit too much and then suck the oil back out. I um, have a way of telling how much oil there is in here and then um, so I'm quite happy with that, so I'm going to go with that. So put the spring back on, we're just going to pull the hydraulic up. cap to make sure that the cap goes right the way down and seats properly on the rod like that and then as we keep winding the hydraulic lock will wind up
check your manual for, manual for the torque settings for that. And uh, screw the cap back on. And that's it. A 25mm shorter fork leg.